Uh, tonight's scripture reading will be Hebrews 8, 8 through 13. That's Hebrews chapter 8, verses 8 through 13. For he finds fault with them when he says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. For they did not continue in my covenant, and so I show no concern for them, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws into their minds and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall not teach each one his neighbor and each one his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, for the least of them to the greatest. For I will be merciful toward their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. And speaking of a new covenant, he makes the first one obsolete, and what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. Good afternoon, and glad that we are uh, gathered back together tonight. This morning, uh, we looked at the Old Testament. We looked at how, how do we perceive the Old Testament. Uh, and, and the main point that we try to make this morning is to make sure that we as, as Christians today, as New Testament Christians today, as students of the Bible, uh, understand that there is a difference between the Old and the New Testament. Uh, and we talked about in, in some cases how uh, an understanding, a simple understanding of the fact that there is a, a difference between these two separate parts of the, of the Bible that we study... Uh, can help to avoid many, many issues. Uh, and that's just something that, that I think probably we often take for granted, that there may be some of our religious friends, some of our, our friends that uh, consider themselves to be Christians, that follow Christ in their daily lives, that don't understand that. They don't understand that there is a difference, that, that while all of, the, all of the Bible is valuable, uh, that there is the old law, the old testament, the old covenant, that old relationship that God had with the Israelites specifically, uh, that was good. And there was nothing wrong with it, uh, but it's not what we're under today, and that we're under something even better uh, than the old covenant today, a relationship with, uh, with God through faith in Christ Jesus, and this new covenant relationship, this new uh, opportunity that we have to be who God wants us to be. So we, we do need to understand that the Old Testament uh, is no longer in effect today. Uh, that that if, even if it were in effect today, that just like during its time uh, when it was in effect, it would only be for those who were born into the Jewish nation and those who were a part of the, the religion of Judaism, because that was who it was for, and the laws specifically uh, applied to them and applied to those people in that situation. But we don't want to, to go to the opposite extreme and think, well, okay, well, we don't have to study the Old Testament. Uh, that, that is actually, in some ways, a, a, a mindset that some people have had about the Church of Christ uh, in the past, is that we don't believe in the Old Testament because we consider ourselves to be New Testament Christians, because we live by the New Testament, because in reference to our, our worship, we only look to, and, and rightly so, we only look to the New Testament in matters of salvation. We only look to the New Testament. So some people have mistakenly, certainly, uh, but maybe partially because of, of our own uh, thrust of New Testament, perhaps to the exclusion of the Old Testament, some have come to the conclusion that the members of the Church of Christ don't believe in the Old Testament. And of course, nothing could be further from the truth. We recognize that the Old Testament is as much God's Word as the New Testament is, but you have to understand the context and the, the message and who it was for and those types of things. So what we want to look at tonight uh, is that there, uh, look at is five specific blessings that we can get through studying the Old Testament. Uh, why should we study the Old Testament? Should we study the Old Testament at all? Is there anything beneficial uh, to studying the Old Testament? This is not one of the five, but I think one that uh, just popped into my, my mind as I was sitting there and worshiping and, and thinking about the lesson. Uh, think about all the, for an ineloquent way to say it, all the cool stories we wouldn't have if we didn't have the Old Testament. Think about David and Goliath. We wouldn't know about David and Goliath if we didn't have the Old Testament. We wouldn't know about Noah and the ark. We wouldn't know about Moses and the parting of the Red Sea. We wouldn't know about the, the plagues of Egypt. We wouldn't know about all these stories that, that all of us have known and have, have caught and grabbed our attention since we were little, right? And, and in reality, why do we do Vacation Bible School so often on stories like that from the Old Testament? Because they capture our attention, they capture our imagination, and they teach us about the power, the majesty of this God that we serve today. So think about just, just that simple uh, fact is one great reason uh, 
uh, of course, for us to study uh, the Old Testament. Though the Old Testament has been fulfilled, as we talked about this morning from Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17, uh, a study of the Old Testament is certainly still useful. Uh, to conclude or for us to come to the conclusion or for anyone to, to come to the conclusion that we cannot benefit from the Old Testament because it doesn't contain the law that we now live under uh, is not only naive, it's also unscriptural. Uh, think about the fact that the, the, the people who, who studied and first learned about who Jesus was outside of the, uh, the prophecy, of, of the miraculous prophecy given to the, the apostles and others in the first century, how did they come to know and believe that Jesus was the Christ? Through a study of the Old Testament. Uh, that, that is, uh, it's extremely valuable to us. And, and before the, the New Testament was formed and, and given in its, in its uh, completeness, the only scripture that existed, even for the Christian in the early years, was the Old Testament. And that's what they studied from. Let's look at five things tonight uh, that will be beneficial for all of us to study the Old Testament. And these are true, uh, not only of the Old Testament, but of all of scripture. First of all, knowing the Old Testament scripture will eliminate Condemning the innocent. Uh, knowing Old Testament scripture will help us to eliminate condemning the innocent. In, in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 5, uh, the Pharisees have, have come to Jesus, and they, uh, this is after Jesus and his uh, apostles were walking through a, a field of grain. You'll remember that story. Uh, and, and the apostles, in their hunger, they uh, pluck some of the heads of grain and they, they throw them in their mouths. They, they eat a little bit. And the, the problem that the Pharisees have with this is what? It's a Sabbath day. Uh, and they are, they are so strict, they are so focused, they are so uh, hypervigilant about this idea that they say that, that, that walking through that field and plucking those heads of grains, they were working on the Sabbath day, which the old law said you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath day. So they condemn uh, Jesus because he allowed his apostles to do so. And his, his answer is in Matthew 12, 5, Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath, excuse me, uh, the priest in the temple break the Sabbath and are Blameless. So here, Jesus, uh, as they are using the law and using perhaps a, a portion of the law to condemn Jesus and to condemn his apostles, he actually says, haven't you read in the law? He, he's telling them, and again, while most, a couple of these examples at least will be uh, about Jesus talking to the Pharisees about the Old Testament, this does apply also to the, the New Testament. Uh, because the Pharisees had inconsistently applied the Scripture by attaching them to the traditions of men and, and their own traditions, they condemned innocent men. Uh, likewise, today, uh, when one fails to, to understand, as we talked about this morning, the, the proper place uh, and the purpose of the Old Testament, uh, it's possible that, that he or she may uh, become guilty of condemning the innocent, or perhaps even more possible that, that he or she may misapply the Old Testament and become guilty themselves, thinking themselves innocent. Well, it said to do it this way in the Old Testament. It says it this way in this book. It happens to be in the Old Testament, so that must be the way that I can do it. And, and, a, and a misunderstanding of the, the whole of the Bible, the whole of the message of Scripture, can certainly uh, lead someone to, to condemn someone uh, guiltily, to be guilty of condemning someone who is innocent, or of becoming guilty thinking yourself innocent anyway. I think one of the best ideas about this is, along these lines is as we talked about last Sunday morning, I believe, we talked in, in our Bible class, we talked about the possibility of when you're studying the Bible, having deep, meaningful study, and how possibly commentaries would be good for that, and knowing some of the original Greek language or Hebrew language might be good for that. And, and all of that is true. But, but I think the, the best, what I've heard and what I've found to be true, is the best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. If we, if we will study more of the Bible, we'll understand more of the Bible. There, there are passages within Scripture, certainly, that, that may be difficult for us to understand, perhaps because of situations that were happening to that original audience. But if we would simply uh, read probably just the, the few verses before and the few verses after, or, or maybe the chapter before and the chapter after, or, or God forbid, we, we read the entire book in one sitting, we would probably really understand the message of Scripture much better. So the more we study God's Word, the better we will be likely to understand God's Word. Again, human traditions, as these Pharisees are guilty of, uh, having these human traditions uh, justify, justified by an appeal to the Old Testament, but in contrast with New Testament standards, uh, that, that occurs when we fail to understand the, the limited scope and the specific audience and authority of the Law of Moses, which again, as we talked about this morning, was only in reference to the, the Israelites, the nation of Israel, and those who are part of that religion. Uh, again, examples of this would be use of instruments, uh, 
Uh, perhaps even as we talked about a, a couple of uh, weeks ago in a Bible class, uh, polygamous relationships and what that looks like. And as we talked about uh, this morning, even things like marriage, divorce, and remarriage. Secondly, uh, when we think about the Old Testament and what good is it, secondly, knowing the Old Testament scriptures will enable us to have an honorable use of God's word. Well, knowing the Old Testament will help us to, to use God's word more honorably. Here another interaction between Jesus and, uh, and the, the, the Sadducees here. In Matthew chapter 19 and verse 4, uh, he says to them, And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? This, excuse me, this is the Pharisees. Uh, the, again, in this passage about marriage, divorce, and remarriage, and, and, and this relationship, and, and what's going on here, they're trying to ensnare Jesus. They're trying to, to trick Jesus, to, to trap Jesus in something, so that they can discredit him and discredit his message to anyone and to everyone who would listen. Uh, and and they're, in their attempt to do so, their misuse of Scripture, they're doing so for evil purposes. So you have the Pharisees here in this example. And this is just one of many examples where they do this. Where they use Scripture, almost like Satan does in, in Matthew chapter 4, where uh, Satan quotes Scripture to Jesus in an effort to try and get him to sin. In, in, a, in a similar way, the Pharisees are, are using a, a passage of Scripture here to try and trap Jesus. They're, they're using God's good and holy word for an evil purpose. And we contrast that with the Bereans in Acts chapter 17 and verse 11. When the Bereans heard a message that they were unfamiliar with, what did they do? They searched the scriptures. Why? To see if these things were so. They, they studied to see if what the preacher was saying was true. Brothers and sisters, we of course need to do that ourselves today. You need to do that today. I'm certainly not, it's not my goal or my aim to mislead you. But you need to do that and make sure that I'm, I'm correct. And if I'm not, come to me in a loving and gentle way and, and correct me. And we'll be okay. Uh, but certainly for our, for our religious friends... Uh, there are false teachers. And that's an uncomfortable thing to think, and nobody wants to think that, and certainly nobody wants to think that their own, their own preacher or teacher is, is a false teacher, but Scripture teaches us over and over and over again that there will be, and there are today, false teachers. So we need to instill within ourselves, as we encourage our religious friends, hey, you really need to study your Bible to see if what your preacher is saying is right, or what your mom and dad are saying is right, or what you are saying is right. When we understand God's word better, we'll use God's word more honorably to find out the truth rather than to perhaps trap other people. Uh, thirdly, knowing the Old Testament scriptures will eradicate false doctrine. It goes a little bit to what we were just talking about, but knowing the Old Testament, yes, even the Old Testament, will help to eradicate false doctrine. Uh, it says in, in um, Mark chapter 12 and verse 24, Jesus answered and said to them, Are you not therefore mistaken, because you do not know the Scriptures, nor the power of God? And then it goes on to say in 26 and 27, But concerning the dead, that they arise, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the burning bush passage, how God spoke to him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. You are therefore greatly Mistaken. Here, Jesus, uh, the Sadducees are the ones who are, are talking about here. And the, the Sadducees you're probably familiar with, they did not believe in the resurrection. That was one of their core beliefs. That's one of the things that differentiated them between the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They didn't believe that there's going to be an afterlife. They think that this life is, is all that there is. So they come to Jesus, and this is the passage where they ask about the man who, uh, or the, the woman who ends up having seven, seven husbands. And, and they ask in the resurrection, who's, uh, who are they going to be married to? Uh, and that's the, the passage that it's talking about here. And, um, and, and it, it, G Jesus is making the point to them about the, uh, the resurrection, that they're, basically that there is a resurrection. And he says to them, because they, they don't understand the Scripture, is why they have this false understanding of doctrine. Uh, the same thing is true for us today. Uh, again, most of us, whether at this congregation or another church of Christ... Or perhaps in another body somewhere, most of us have probably grown up going to church the majority of our lives. Uh, and so we have heard certain things the majority of our lives. For those of us who grew up in the church, we have heard probably um, very, very frequently, hear, believe, repent, confess, be baptized. The emphasis on baptism. And that is true, right? But it's not true because we've heard it over so many times. It's true because the Bible teaches it. And, and these are the things that, that we need to understand and, and make sure that we, we do know book, chapter, and verse. 
uh, you're familiar with, and certainly some of our, our older members are familiar with the time when the Church of Christ was, was known as Bible toters and Bible quoters. This idea that the members of the church would carry their Bibles with them constantly every day. And, and more than that, they would, as the, the, the passage in Hebrews that was read to us, they would have that law written on their hearts. They'd know it in their minds. They'd be able to quote Scripture to answer circumstances and situations that they were in. So we need to, again, have the truth of God's Word within us so that we can understand what Scripture says and the doctrines that there are. Again, how will, how will knowing the Old Testament and the New Testament help to eradicate false teaching? Because as we study more of God's Word, we'll understand more of God's Word more fully. We can't simply, again, believe the things that we believe because we've just been told those things so often. We need to understand why we believe those things and where those things come from in Scripture. Fourthly, knowing the Old Testament Scriptures will establish faith in Jesus as the Christ. This is perhaps one of the most important things for us today, and perhaps certainly for the first century Christians, one of the most important things. In Mark chapter 12 and verse 10, it says there, Have you not even read this Scripture? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. I've, ta- I've thought a lot about, and I think I've mentioned this to you uh, a number of times, either in Bible classes or in, or in sermons. The idea that, that we look at those Pharisees, we look at those Sadducees, we look at those people who, who were there when Jesus was there, who walked with Jesus, walked the same places Jesus walked, worshipped with Jesus, saw Jesus perform miracles, uh, and yet they still deny Him. We think specifically about the Pharisees who should know the old law, the Sadducees, the scribes who should know the old law. And we look to and we, we, we understand how many Old Testament prophecies there were about this Messiah. And, and, and I do, and I think you do too, you, you rack your brains and say, how did they miss it? How did they not understand that this was Jesus? And, and one of the answers is, in, in this passage here, it says, have you not even read this scripture? It, it seems as if, much like today... Religious people during the first century didn't read their Bible enough. If they would have read their Bible enough, it would have been much more difficult for them to have missed Jesus. And probably, like the Bereans, those who took the time when they heard about Jesus or when they heard Jesus' claims or when they saw and heard Jesus' teaching, if they would have looked back and read their Bibles, even the Old Testament, they would have understood that Jesus was the Christ. The Old Testament testifies of Jesus, uh, signifying that he is the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Jesus fulfilled hundreds of Old Testament prophecies, hundreds of years after they were spoken about. Uh, There was one central message. This was the one central message taken by the apostles to the lost world. They would go and they, especially to the Jews, they would show them, look at what this passage said hundreds of years ago. Well, this man, Jesus, he fulfilled these prophecies. He fulfilled these promises. This is exactly what Paul means uh, when he reminds uh, Timothy that from from childhood he had known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Did did you catch that? Listen, in 2 Timothy 3, verse 15, when Paul reminds Timothy that he knew the Old Testament Scriptures, you know the Scriptures, he's talking about the Old Testament, and he says, "...and and those Old Testament Scriptures can lead you to faith in Christ Jesus and the salvation that's therein." Uh, It's amazing, and we, we probably don't do it enough, that we could just use the Old Testament... And teach people about Jesus. Think about the Ethiopian. What, what passage of Scripture was he reading? He was reading from the book of Isaiah, right? And he was taught about Jesus from the book of Isaiah. Uh, and and that's, that's how most first century Christians were taught by, by, from Scripture. Is they looked at the Old Testament, they saw and believed what it said. Jesus was the, the stone which the builders should have recognized. They should have known. They should have been looking for him. But they were looking for something else. Uh, Their failure to understand the Old Testament contributed to their rejection of Him as Savior and of His salvation. And the Old Testament today uh, continues to stand as a reliable testimony to God's purpose of salvation of sinners through Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, We can learn and we we can have our faith established in Christ alone and alone in Christ even through just a study of the Old Testament. And fifthly and lastly this this evening, knowing the Old Testament, another important use of of knowing the Old Testament and understanding it and studying it, uh, is made by New Testament Christians. It is found as a warning against the failures of the the children of Israel. 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11, Paul says, Now these things happened to them, referencing the Israelites. The things that happened to the Israelites, these things happened to them as an example. Not only did the, do they serve as an example, but those things were written for our instruction, upon whom the, age, the end of the ages has come. So for us, us today, one of the great purposes of the Old Testament is to understand and to look at the, the successes and the failures of those in the Old Testament to appreciate, to learn from their example, their, again, their, the, the times when they did well and the times when they did poorly, uh, and to live lives according to that. When Israel obeyed God, she was blessed by God. When Israel was disobedient, God brought, brought judgment upon her as a nation. Uh, the inspired writer of Hebrews uh, uses the Old Testament history of Israel uh, to urge Christians to be very careful to hear and obey the gospel of God. If you have your Bibles, turn to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 as we conclude this evening. Hebrews 2, 1 through 4. Of course, the, uh, the book of Hebrews is written to the Hebrews or the Israelites, the children of God, those uh, Jews of the, the first century specifically, uh, but it certainly has meaning for us today. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, the, the writer says, For this reason we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, talking about the gospel message, so that we do not drift away from it. For if the word spoken through angels proved unalterable, and every transgression and disobedience received a just penalty. He's saying in the Old Testament we have these examples, we have these stories about how when they listened to God, things went well. And when they were disobedient to God's word, things went poorly for them. If they were punished because of this, verse 3, how will we escape if we neglect so great a salvation. Again, you and I today have the privilege of being a part of a better covenant, a better relationship with God, a, a, a covenant that, that actually has the forgiveness of sins included in it. It goes on to say, After it was at the first spoken by the Lord, it was confirmed to us by those who heard, God also testifying with them both by signs and wonders and by various miracles and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit according to His own will. So the, the writer of Hebrews warns the Jews, warns you and I today, that we need to be very careful and recognize that even in the Old Testament, when people were unfaithful to God, when they did not heed His word, when they did not follow His word, they were punishment, punished. And then, and then he makes the point, how are we going to escape when we've got something so much better? In many ways, and probably most of us would think this way, is it e would it be easier today to be a Christian or a Jew? Think about all those, those specific Jewish laws and how, how detailed they were and how we would think how difficult they were versus the freedom the New Testament describes of us having in Christ. And it doesn't mean that we're free to go and sin and do whatever we want to, but I think most of us would look at the, the, the laundry list, the, the tremendous list of 600 plus commandments that the Old Testament had versus the freedom that we experience in Christ, and all of us would choose the freedom of Christ. But he says, these people were punished when they broke these laws. We've got something so much better. And, and in essence, it's going to be much more difficult to fall away from God in Christ than it would have been in the, in the old covenant to fall away from God. And how are we going to, to, to miss a punishment if we neglect so great a salvation? So, to wrap up today's thoughts, uh, we don't live under the old law anymore. We can't use the old law to justify our actions uh, alone. If, if it echoes or is repeated in the New Testament or, or gives us a better understanding of New Testament things, then, then it's certainly valuable. Uh, but we must live according to this new covenant, this new relationship, this new testament that has been brought about through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, so while we're not under the Old Testament at the same time tonight, uh, it is still valuable. There is still much benefit for us to, to study. And it's not just, it's not just the cool stories. You can be a better Christian if you'll study the Old Testament. If you study all of God's law, all of God's word, uh, you will become more of who he would have you to be. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the time that we have to study your word. Lord, help us to, to learn, to, to grow, and to appreciate uh, all of your word. Lord, I thank you for the fact that probably all of us, if, if not at least the majority of us, do understand the, the value of, of every word of Scripture. Lord, sometimes we may ignore certain parts because they don't, we don't think that they uh, apply to us or have as much meaning or have as much value to us. Lord, help us to, to appreciate and, again, to have those, those deep, meaningful uh, searches of your Scripture, to see about our faith, to increase our faith.
to understand your word from a better way, dear God. Lord, help us each and every single day uh, to study your word, and then most importantly, to go out into the world and to live our lives according to your word. Lord, we're thankful for your grace. We're thankful for your mercy that was brought about to us through the death of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the hope that we have that was brought about by his resurrection, dear God. Lord, we long for the day when you return and take us home to heaven. Lord, use us for your glory and forgive us for our sins. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Tonight, if you have any needs, uh, you're welcome to, to come forward and let those needs be known as we stand and sing.